In this lesson, we'll cover unpacking and assembling the FC4500. Before starting, there are some precautions that we need to cover. First, don't build the unit alone. It's easier to put the stand together with two people and thus avoid injury. Once the unit is built, place it in an area that is dust-free, dry, and is not in direct sunlight. Make sure there's a rated power outlet that is grounded properly. Place it in an area that has enough room surrounding it, perhaps two to three feet on each side. This makes it easier when loading material on the bed or walking around it. Since it is a table, there may be a temptation to place items like boxes on top of it. Try to avoid this since it can cause damage to the table. Here are some precautions for maintaining the product. Don't clean with solvents. The manual recommends a dry cloth or a cloth that has been dampened with a neutral detergent diluted with water. Don't oil the parts since it's absolutely unnecessary. Finally, if something goes wrong, don't try to repair it. Call your dealer or Graftex Technical Support Department. Later in this lesson, we'll be discussing how to apply the adhesive mats or sheets. Each has a cover sheet to the adhesive surface. When removing this cover, don't discard it. The cover can be used to protect the adhesive when the cutter is not in use. There are also a few important precautions to follow when operating the cutter. First, handle the blades with care. They're small and they're easy to lose. These blades are sharp and can cut you if you're not careful. This will be covered in a later lesson, but avoid overextending the blade. This will help extend the life of the blade as well as the table. To avoid injury, don't get too close to the moving parts. Inevitably, clothing can get torn or pulled. If you purchase the unit without a stand, first locate a tabletop such as a large flat desk or table to place the unit on. Remove the unit from the box and place it in that location. If you purchase the FC451060 with the optional stand, it's contained in a separate box from the unit. Locate the box and remove the contents. Lay out the parts, preferably on a soft surface such as carpet, so that they are easily accessible. Take note that the two side panels each have little drawers that extend from the top stems. Make sure that these are facing towards the front as you start to build the stand. Next, locate the two cross arms, one with a Graftec label and one without. Take the cross arm with the Graftec label and attach it to one of the side panels. To do this, lay one side panel on its side, making sure that the Graftec label is facing toward the front. Mount the screws using the Allen wrench that was provided, but do not tighten the screws just yet. Position the other side panel on its side, opposite to the other side panel, and mount the cross arm to it. Once again, take care not to tighten the screws just yet. Carefully flip the two side panels with the one cross arm over the other side and mount the other cross arm to the opposite side. Once the two cross arms are mounted, set the stand upright. Next, take the top table mounting bracket and place it on the top of the stand. Position the bracket so that the five plastic rings face up, making sure that the side with the three plastic rings faces towards the front. Using four M5 screws, mount the bracket to the stand. Once the bracket has been mounted, with the assistance of another person, take the unit out of the box and place it on the mounted bracket. Look underneath the table, aligning the holes on the brackets to the cutter. Once aligned, take the white thumb screws and mount them in three places, two in back and one in front, and then hand tighten the screws. Finally, tighten the screws on the stand. Once the table is mounted, you can now remove these two brackets in the back of the Y-bar. 
These hold the Y bar in place during shipping and have to be removed before turning on the cutter. Remove a clamp by first removing the screws and then the clamp. Do this for the other side as well. And then remove both of the clamp bases by removing the two mounted screws. As a note, if you have difficulty removing the base clamps, just twist them and then slightly angle them up to remove them. Once the base clamps are removed, place the screws back in their original holes. After removing the Y-bar clamps, remove the rest of the packing such as the tape holding the tool head in place. When opening the box for the FC4500 flatbed cutter, you should see the following accessories. A power cable. A USB cable. A cutting tool with a blade. A water-based fiber-tipped pen. Origin point alignment guides. A pack of adhesive sheets or mats. A CD-ROM with user manuals and software. A quick guide. A sheet showing different precautions. And of course, this video DVD. Mounting the adhesive mats and sheets may seem difficult, but if you follow these instructions and the tips shown within this video segment, it should go fairly well. We suggest that you review this section first so that you can see the whole process before trying it on your own. Since the FC4550 has the electrostatic bed for holding the media, only the FC4510-60 is supplied with both an adhesive sheet and an adhesive mat to choose from. For most cutting, and especially with creasing, the adhesive mat is sufficient. If there is a need for a stronger hold down for the material you plan to cut, then mount the adhesive sheet instead. The same steps are followed whether you're mounting the adhesive mat or the sheet. In this case, we'll be demonstrating how to mount the adhesive mat. The items needed to mount the adhesive mat or sheet are a spray bottle full of water, a rigid piece of plastic that will act as a squeegee. In other words, something that is thin and rigid to remove any excess water or bubbles beneath the mat. Before mounting the adhesive mat or sheet, make sure the cutter is turned off and unplugged since water will be used during the process. When looking at the table, the cutting area for the FC4510-60 is this area. The adhesive sheets or mats each come with two sections that will cover the left half and the right half of the cutting area of the table. Move the Y bar by slowly moving the Y arm to the far right of the table. This will provide room to place the first mat. Take the spray bottle and gently mist the cutting area of the table. Each side of the mat has a thin cover to protect the adhesive. One side has a stronger adhesive than the other. This is the side that faces and will adhere to the table. Peel off the thin protective sheet from that side first and carefully lay it on the left side of the cutting area of the table. The water mist on the table allows the sheet to be maneuverable. Maneuver it so that the bottom left edge of the mat is aligned to the bottom left edge of the table. Smooth the mat down by using the squeegee. Start from the middle of the mat and work towards the outside. Keep in mind that the goal is to remove as much of the water bubbles from underneath the mat as possible. This process can be repeated for the other side. Start by slowly moving the Y arm to the left side this time. If need be, re-wet this side with the spray bottle. Remove the second adhesive mat out of the bag and determine which side is tackier. Peel the protective sheet from that side and lay it gently on the right side of the first mat butting against it. Then gently and slowly lay the rest down. Smooth it down once again by starting in the middle and then smoothing it outward with a plastic squeegee to remove as much water and bubbles from underneath the mat. Continue to smooth it down and let dry for a couple of hours. Finally, peel the top protective sheets off both mats and store them so that they are accessible. As mentioned, they can be placed on top of the mat later on to keep it dust-free and clean. 